going to move us on swiftly to Claire Mortimer, who um, is representing faith groups Southwest. Thank you, Claire. So that's Faith Net Southwest Strapline to support faith in action in the Southwest. Um, this is a cover of a report that we produced in 2006 after extensive research over the Southwest region into the provision that faith groups were making for um, the community, um, which is in fact vast. There are thousands of volunteers and thousands of projects for young people, older people, disabled people, etc., etc. Um, and uh, so FaithNet is trying to be the voice of faith groups in the Southwest. That's quite a big task, of course, um, and a work in process. And uh, part of our work has been to help either to initiate or to assist in the establishment of faith forums in various places, including Cornwall. Devon, Somerset, <coughs> South Somerset, North Somerset, and South Gloucestershire. There's not to say that there aren't faith forums in other places. In fact, in Plymouth, there's a recently established um, Plymouth Council of Faiths, um, which um, we haven't had anything to do with, um, but hope to work with in the future. Um, so we're trying to be the voice of faith in the Southwest. So um, after some training, uh, we thought we'd better look at how effective we were being. And I know some of you are going to go in the voice and echo training workshop this afternoon, and there might be something else uh, about it in the plenary. And um, so after doing the training and taunting, I used the voice tour with FaithNet Southwest, which was very interesting. Because I think when you work in this sector, you're always so aware of how much that needs to be done. It, it's huge. I mean, Faith Dead Southwest actually covers the whole of the Southwest region, which runs from like, Swindon and Bournemouth all the way down to the City Isles. Um, so it's a huge area. Um, but what was really interesting when we used the Forest Tour, there are obviously some things that we needed to work on to improve uh, how we're behaving. Um, but we found out that we were better than we thought we were. <laughs> And uh, what was interesting is that one very new member of the organisation um, had a much higher impression of us than we did inside because she could see the good things that were going on, but we were very aware of the things that we weren't doing or that needed to be better. Um, this is the voice handy guide that uh, you can download from the internet, and I'm sure the group this afternoon will be looking at that. Um, and that's what we used. It's, it's pretty simple. And it can be found at that URL. Um, but if you just go to changesuk.net, it's very easy to find it. Luckily, I only work in Devon. And my job is to try to empower um, people from diverse cultures and young people to get them involved and to use their voice um, through the Faith Avenue. There's a lot of overlap with my work with Fatah and Ozzy and I do work together sometimes. Um, 
part of my work has to be to find out in Devon what is already going on that's, that's good and that helps to empower people and to make them feel part of the society and that their voice is heard. Something I've been really impressed with is the Methodist Youth Participation Strategy, and that's actually a national program. But they realised as a church that they weren't properly engaging with young people, and so they formulated this strategy and set up offices in the different regions. And the Youth Participation Officer for the South West actually lives in Plymouth, a, a wonderful young woman called Sharon Rowe. And the whole point of this strategy is to work with youth to provide the activities that they want and to empower them to then start taking control of the activities. And as Sharon says, um, youth work is something that you do with young people, not for young people. Now that there are actually many issues still in many churches, that there are still people who are doing it for young people and there's a culture shift that needs to to happen, but, um, but this is a start. I'm, I'm really impressed with that strategy. And here's young, one young person called Philippa, who's from uh, the Halcyon Project, um, the Methodist Church there. And uh, she has grown up through that system, uh, and she is now running a, a group for children, uh, which is fantastic. She's 18 or 19. <laughs> Um, I visited Plymouth Cathedral, and I don't know if any of you worship there or visited there, but it's an absolute feast of the nations. It's wonderful. There are so many different cultures and people and babies in pushchairs, and it's, it's a very vibrant. There's somebody nodding. Do you go there? <laughs> um, and uh, you would think that that could be quite an issue, really. But I think because everybody there, they come from all over the world, but they all understand the mass. So they've got something that brings them together. Um, even if they don't understand the language that the mass is in, they understand what's going on. <laughs> and uh, there are very large communities, um, including uh, an Indian community, um, that have really started to take control of their affairs. They now do special jobs within the church. One of them has been sitting on the church council. And the whole church seems to have an ethos of um, trying to engage people in the way that they want to be engaged. And what's really interesting is that uh, Father Nannery, the uh, uh, priest there, um, I forget his proper title, excuse me, um, he says, you know, a lot of people, they don't want to sit on council meetings. <laughs> they don't want to be, like, engaging with our bureaucratic structures that we do so well in this country. <laughs> and um, so he has learned to empower people to get involved in the way that they want to be involved, which may not be sitting around talking and actually using their voice, but doing something different that they're comfortable with and that is more culturally sensitive to, to where they're coming from. Um, here are some of the uh, people of the Indian community that have decided once a month that they're actually going to make a tea for all the congregation um, after the service. specifically with the Devon Faith and Belief Forum. And again, it's one of those circumstances where um, something's been set up and there's a long way to go and we constantly get frustrated with um, our capacity at the moment, but we actually do good things to, to increase that capacity. Um, one of the things that we're really trying to do at the moment is to engage people of different backgrounds, different faiths and different cultures. Because, as I said before when I was talking about the, the Catholic Church, the way that these faith forums work sometimes is trying to fit into the bureaucratic structure. It's trying to relate to the statutory body and be a voice for faith. Um, but those systems uh, are pretty non-understandable for a lot of people. Um, 
and um, even I struggle with it, and um, I think a lot of other people do too. Um, so one thing we started to try and do is really try to forge bonds of friendship in the first instance. And um, that may sound easy, but it's not always easy. We're coming from cultural backgrounds, we're coming from different faiths, we have strong views. I expect that's our thing starting to go again, isn't it? Oh, it's shutting down. <laughs> Help, Stuart. <laughs> start to be able to engage them in a way that is appropriate for them and also to encourage them because we all need encouragement. So I can't overstress the friendship part as a first step of giving people a voice and a presence. Um, and gradually the Devon Faith and Blue Forum is, is getting more and more people from different cultures taking part. Um, we were very aware, though, that we still had a long way to go, so we also worked with the Take Part um, training course um, with Exeter Council for Voluntary Services, and um, where we had brilliant training with uh, one of their workers, Linda Paul, who really helped us to focus on what we are all about, because we we're also aware, you know, what is the Devon Faith and Belief, Belief Forum really about? We know what the statutory sector wants us to be, <laughs> but what are we really about? And, um, and then a more recent and quite exciting development is that we start to work with um, an organisation called Devon United Women. Um, and the um, Interfaith Women's Group, which is coming out of Exeter Mosque. And it was called the Muslim Interfaith Women's Group, but they want to call it an Interfaith Women's Group. And we've started to work with them. And which is a really exciting um, thing for the future that will eventually have a women's forum that is, will feed into the Devon Faith and Belief Forum so the voice of women will be heard. And we were discussing with the women last night actually and talking about how often again our processes are not appropriate for women to find their voice. Um, Diana and I were talking at the beginning that Often in this culture, we're in a culture where people will, um, the, the loudest voice is heard. But if you're in discussion, somebody will actually interrupt you to get their voice heard. And if you're a little more retiring or shy or quiet or have different cultural paradigms where they just don't do that, <laughs> then it's likely that your voice may never be heard. Um, so it's really interesting to be starting to work with the women from different cultures. This is what I've just talked about. I just slipped that picture in um, because this is really a part of um, the friendship thing, I think. This is the Devon United Women event. And um, there's a few of us at that bigger event doing a yoga class. And um, this is the kind of place where it starts making friends, doing stuff together. And finally, I'd like to tell you about the It Matters to Me project. This is the original <coughs> It Matters to Me crowd of 16 young people from eight different faiths and beliefs does include one humanist, very brave of him to <laughs> be the only humanist in all these different religions. Um, 
and it has now gone up to about 21 participants. Um, these young people came together to do activities together, have fun together, and also to prepare themselves to speak about their beliefs on DVD. And recently they've been, fil they filmed each other as a preparation, but recently um, a crew from Plymouth University has been filming them all individually speaking about their beliefs and what it means to be living with that belief in Devon as a young person today. And it's been an amazingly wonderful process. One thing that I hadn't expected was that they bonded immediately. They're a little bit shy at first, but they bonded pretty much immediately. And they just seem to grow to love each other very, very quickly. I think young people just don't have the barriers that older people have. And they don't need to hold on to, this is my belief and that's yours and we're different. And what I noticed is that they actually have found a peer group amongst themselves. Um, because they say that many of their friends don't have a belief at all. So they're actually a minority, often, in school and in the community. And so they just really like being with each other because they all actually have a strong belief. And they've all found that their strong beliefs are pretty similar, actually. Um, so it's been inspiring to work with them. And, uh, and the good news is that we have just employed a, a young man um, who's from Jewish background. He um, is going to work with the young people until the end of March, funding me again. <laughs> and um, he is going to now talk to them about the future with hopefully um, the outcome will be, if they want it, um, to actually create a permanent youth forum a youth faith and belief forum for Devon, um, which is a very exciting um, development, or would be. Um, and finally, I, I couldn't resist having an <laughs> advert. <laughs> if you like the sound of, of that project and would like to find out about more inspirational projects that are going on, we're actually having our final event called Faith in the Future. Um, Monday the 20th of March, Old Grey Mansion in Paynton. Vegetarian supper. Mm -hmm. I can bribe you to come along with that. <laughs> <laughs> I've just mentioned a Justin Diggins sing there because he is an inspiring person that we've invited to come down. He, he's 19 years old and he has been for four years the chair of the Youth Faith and Belief Forum in Yorkshire and Hunside, which is um, called United Voices. And not only that, he's a professional guitar player starting his own business at the moment. So um, I'm hoping that he's going to not only inspire us with his music, but also with his experience of the Youth Forum up north. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you.